When you opened your eyes this morning, you were given something, something precious, something irreplaceable, something you will never have again, something that's a gift. That something is today. It's a chance to love your children with reckless abandon and not let the hurts of your childhood be repeated with them. It's a chance to live out your faith in the nine to five instead of compartmentalizing the sacred and secular. It's a chance to be the hands and feet of Christ in a dying world. It's a chance to start fresh, new, to make a change, to not be tied down to who you were, but to head down the road towards who you were meant to be. It's a chance to cling to the words of Christ, to experience life and experience it abundantly. Or you could play it safe today, not risk and maybe put it off until tomorrow. The only problem with that is tomorrow might not come. Good morning, Victory Anaheim. My name is Morgan. Obviously, I'm not Pastor Dave. I know we kind of look alike, but obviously I'm not him. I have the pleasure of sharing the announcements of everybody here who's gathered and everybody who's online. I would like to kick off the announcements with membership class. Membership class is a great time for community and fellowship to all of those who are planning to be a part of the church's future. If you'd like to plan activities, if you want to be plugged in, this is a great opportunity for you to do that. That's going to be on Wednesday, September 15th at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be located at 520 West South Street in the church offices. I encourage everybody who is sitting or standing who has felt a calling in God saying, I need a sign. I need a sign to be plugged in. This is that neon sign. This is the big neon sign with fireworks attached to it. This is the sign for you to get plugged in. We'd all be overjoyed to have you there. Backups are going to be in the back table, or feel free to contact Pastor Dave himself. Next item to cover is going to be a very special Sunday service next week. That's going to be September 19th, right after Sunday service. We are going to have a very fun activities planned right outside in the courtyard. We are going to have snow cones, watermelon, and hot dogs, and also games for the kiddos. So right after Sunday service, please gather in the courtyard because we're going to have some great activities planned. And it's not just watermelon Sunday. I like to add a little bit to that. It's also going to be bring a friend Sunday. There is no better way to get somebody to go to church than to say, hey, you're going to be fed physically. But at the end of the day, they're not just going to be fed physically. You're also going to have them fed spiritually. So that's a huge importance. I encourage everybody to bring a friend, take that initiative, and let them know, hey, there's going to be some free hot dogs right afterward. And that is hard to pass up. And as always, please stay in touch with us. Please connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Victory Anaheim or at Lantau David, or feel free to subscribe to our weekly newsletter by sending us an email at info, info at victoryanaheim.org. Send us an email to info at victoryanaheim.org. It has been my pleasure to share the announcements with y'all and let us all rise to our feet and worship the Lord together. Thank you, Morgan. Yes, that video was awesome. Let's worship the Lord together, living abundantly, right? Take some risks. <laughs> blessed be your name, oh Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness 
guys a uh, little uh, little story time for you got a flat tire on the way here tire exploded ripped to shreds I had no idea what happened uh, pulled over the first place I could got the jack out uh, I spilled paint in my car a little while back and the tire dried to the bottom so I couldn't get it out so I looked for a solution that I use for for cleaning wood to soften the paint couldn't find it in my car, uh, so I just stood there trying to rip up the, the dry tire to the bottom of the floor. Finally got it off, opened my car door. The handle came off of my car door. Uh, so my dad came, 
we're putting the jack under. The lug nuts were so tight, when we pulled it, the jack came loose. We didn't think it was off. We thought it was fine. We kept trying to do the jack. As soon as we took the tire off, the car tipped over. The jack came loose. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, dude, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> This song's first verse says, in my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Your great love will lead me through. So as my car sits there, tipped over on its axle, I praise God. Let's sing. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through it. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. You are my light, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. Shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust a promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. I won't fear what tomorrow brings, with each morning I'll rise and sing. job guys great job go ahead and take your seats um, th I'm going to give you uh, for you guys who are watching at home I just want to give you your last chance to get ready for this because we're going to observe communion in just a moment um, and if you want to pull together the ingredients for communion in your home this is your last opportunity to do so we got it out the the announcement out there so you could be ready if you didn't know then it's because you didn't read our newsletter 
And if you didn't read our newsletter, maybe you're not subscribed to it. So make sure you subscribe to it. So, um, you know, the Christian life, actually your life is made up of the practices that, that, and the habits that you employ in your life. So your life is the sum total of all of the practices that you do. So some of the habits that you have, some of your practices are bad habits, bad practices. And be it your, 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 your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your spiritual well-being, your relational well-being, you either have good habits or bad habits. And I want to implore us all, let's keep getting rid of bad habits and let's keep bringing, it, keep bringing in good habits into our lives. And um, one of the, the, the neglected areas of the Christian life is that people neglect to employ the habits that, that spur on your growth as Christians. And one of those habits is giving. And, and, and churches are notorious and people are notorious for saying, I hate it when churches talk about money. And the reason why churches talk about money is because the way the world works is money makes the world go around, right? Everything happens with money. And our money, just like every other aspect of our lives, if we're followers of Jesus, belongs to God. And, and so what we want to encourage people to do is to give this area along with every other area over to the Lord. And in our church, we practice the tithe. And that practice is a big step of faith. That practice is a big act of trust, saying, God, I trust you, and I'm going to live off of 90%. I trust you. I must still set aside 10%. I must still pay my bills. I'm going to still think about the future, and I'm going to trust you with the 90% or with the 10% so I can live off the 90%. And I would encourage you to, to if you've never begun the practice of tithing to take that step in your faith. And um, you can, on our website, you can see something about the three-month tithe challenge. And it's to trust God and go, I'm going to do this for three months and see what God does. And I just want to encourage you to be part of it and, and to do what, you know, between you and God, take that, that act of faith, that step of faith. Um, and so, you can give in a couple of ways. You here in person, we have the, the giving box in the back at, near, the, near the door. It's a little black box that you can stick your tithe in. And um, for online, it's our, our website, victoryanaheim.org slash donate. And we welcome you and God bless you as you, as, you, as you give. Now, you should have been given elements of communion when you walked in for everybody who, who wants to partake in communion. If you didn't get one, raise your hand so uh, Henry back there, he can get you one if, you, if you, you didn't get one. So communion is one of these practices that Jesus said, do this as often as you will to remember me, to remember me. And, and you know, one of the things I, I, I'm going to confess to you that one of the things that during this season where we're, you know, going back to March of last year where we closed down in-person gatherings for nearly our regular gatherings for about six months. And then we started back up again last November, and we've met every day since November 1st, 2020. And, and we're committed to meeting in person. And um, there's something powerful about God's people being together. And, and, and I thank God for the technology to be able to do it online, but it's not the same. It's not the same. And, and so we, we are glad to be together physically. I'm glad to look out at this crowd and see you guys in person. And it's funny, in 2021, it's like the, 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 the bar of being a good Christian, um, something that, that was never in, in, in my thinking, but like, it's like, oh, just showing up. <laughs> just showing up. It's amazing just to see people showing up. And... I'm going to tell you, put your health in God's hands. Do good health practices, but put your health in God's hands. Christians have always been the people, when there are plagues, when there are outbreaks, they go to where the sick people are and care for them. Christians have been known for that Amen. since day one of the Christian faith. It's one of the marks that set us apart. Amen. And may we always be the people 
who put our health in God's hands more than anything else, more than anything else. And so being together to observe communion is an important part of the Christian faith. And Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of, of me. And so during the, the season of closure, we haven't practiced communion as often as we did prior to March of 2020. And so that changes today. You'll see us observe communion more regularly with a lot more frequency because it's a powerful thing to remember Jesus. The, 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 the liquid, the juice reminds us that Jesus' blood was shed and the wafer reminds us that his body was broken. Amen. Go ahead and crack it open. You can see the two parts. Take out the wafer first. The body of Jesus broken for your sins. Take this in remembrance of Jesus. The blood of Jesus poured out for you so that you might have life, so that you might have life eternal in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Lord, we thank you and we remember you. Lord, you are worthy. This next song, that, that's the very first line, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Father, you sent your son for us so that we can live forever with you in abundance. And Lord, as we stand to our feet and we get ready to worship you, Lord, we center our minds and our hearts on you. Today, as Pastor Brian shares the word, Brother Ryan shares this word from Hebrews 12, 2, and the very first line says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Father, we do that now. Lord, through a turbulent morning or a morning that didn't go as planned, Father, we praise you. Father, as we fix our minds and our hearts on you, we praise you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We fix our eyes and our hearts on you, and we praise you. Lord, you are holy. You are worthy. Let's sing to the Lord. Of life. 
Is the church doing today? I'm gonna say it one more time. How is the church doing today? I'm gonna say it one more time. How is the church doing today? <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice what and be glad in it. Wow. That song seems a song of praise about our Savior, the God who rescued us from everything, right? If you've ever been in a funk, if you're needed somebody that you need to lean on, all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus Christ. He is the one that's waiting for us, right? He's the one that said, I got you, Brian. I got you, Morgan. He's the one to say, just come to me. And I will give you rest. Man, we're in the midst of this thing. The book we call him by David Orlan is the gentle and lowliness of our Savior, the heart of Christ for sinners and sufferers. Anybody out there suffering? Okay, that was a little low thing. <laughs> I'll say it for myself. Sometimes I suffer, and I know the Savior. But sometimes I suffer because I know the Savior. Oh, yeah. When you love Jesus, the enemy is going to be there for you to try to persuade you not to serve the Christ that you know who loves you. So the question we have to ask ourselves, then what do we do? Can I ask this question, man? <laughs> and I was getting prepared for this sermon, right? I asked a lot of people, I said, um, what makes you happy? What makes you happy, right? And then uh, they start this song off, right? Uh, Blessed be the name of our Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We'll get into some little one-on-one uh, English things talking about uh, the translation of happy. 
The translation of happy in the Bible means I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And then we get some translation between uh, joy and happy. They are so close to each other. They're like my brothers, man. I got you, bro. I know you're happy. I'll make you rejoice. But I didn't like it that way, though. But the thing about it is, what we're going to talk about is, it's all about the happiness of Christ Jesus our Lord. In the midst of what we're going through, is anybody happy? Yes. No, that was kind of weak. I'm going to do it one more time. Is any, first of all, before you do that, you understand that the, the word happy can be translated as blessed. Is anybody out there blessed? Yes. So that means you're happy. Yes. So what makes you happy? Yes. Uh, that was kind of a mixed emotion right now. We're going to get back into the sermon right now. Here's the thing is right now. Uh, the question is, who and what do you rely on for your happiness? Who and what do you rely on for your happiness, right? My heart is filled with sorrow. You know why? Yesterday, 20 years ago, someone interrupted our happiness. They knocked down two buildings. I'll never forget it. Never. It was my first year in seminary, Pastor. I was like, what? And when I got there, you know what my professor said? The devil would say, we shouldn't have class today. He said, but God says we're going to do it anyway. We still had class that day. He taught like nobody's business, right? Listen, mate, 9-11 should remind us that the goodness of God not what people try to do for us, but remind us that we are blessed. That means that we are happy in the Lord. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Maybe I need to slow down, Pastor. This mess is not that short. You got a lot of stuff to do when I get out there. I don't know if that's what you believe, right? We need to put down our personal opinion about, hey, should I wear a mask? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I kind of do this? Can I do that? Blah, 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 blah. Let's just say... 20 years ago, we all came together. Can't we establish that feeling again? Can we? Can we stop this nonsense and say, I love Jesus? Ain't about a shot or not a shot in your arm, whatever. I love the Lord who saved my life. Get past that. Sorry, I got my hat on. And people, my, my family is going to say, why do you take your hat off, bro? They're going to tell me that when they see this, right? One thing I want to establish, or God wants to establish, is like, when you talk about happiness or happy, joy is right there. You can't separate those two. Joy is right there with happy or happiness, right? Can I let, take us back to, uh, and I wasn't really good in English, right? Can we take us back to your English class 101? You know, I was never good in English, right? Remember, the, remember when they taught us, like, what's, what's an antonym? See, everybody flunked like I did. <laughs> an antonym of what? The same word what with a different meaning, right? Go back. What's a synonym? Wow. We all flunked English. Hold on. A word that means nearly the same thing, but has a different thing. So when we talk about joy and happy, they can be one of the same thing. He actually said, what is joy? What's joy? When I looked it up, I was doing a sermon in the Home and Bible Dictionary. It said, joy is the happy state that results from knowing, get this, the knowing, from knowing, all right, with me, from knowing, the second part is where we fall off the track, knowing and serving God. Know him. Yeah, I love Jesus. He's the one who saved my life. But what are you doing? I'm going to serve God with the rest of my life. If it takes my life, I'm going to serve the one who said, Brian, I want you to be with me. Hold on, he said, I'm preparing a place for you. What? I 
hated you, God, before I knew you. He said, but I still love you. I'm preparing a place for you, right? Joy is an excitement that we can say at verbal place. I love the Lord. Amen. Mm, somebody went to sleep. I love the Lord. Amen. Okay. Man. Joy is not only an utterance of jubilation, but has an inner feeling of peace that we have, get this, that we have victory in Jesus Christ. Well, everybody went to sleep then. Joy is that we have victory in Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it again. Joy is that we have victory in Jesus Christ. Nothing can stop that. I'm a bold type of dude, man. We was talking about Tuesday when we was at the men's, men, men's small group, right? Y'all need to come. We'll talk about this later in the service. Now, that's deep. You need to talk about the services, man. There is such a joy that we have when we come together. On Tuesday night. Chris, they here today? Chris, you online. Love you, bro. Thank you for everything, right? The Arby's roast beef was delicious. But anyway, get back to the sermon, right? We can find joy and happy hanging around with each other. Here's joy. Here's happy. You can't separate the two. They go together. So the matter of fact is, well, what is happiness? When you look at it from the Old Testament point of view, get this. It says that don't be afraid. Be happy. Hold on. No, let me start right here, right? I'm going to have to date myself, right? Y'all ready to date me? Is somebody, hold on. Jim, I know you know this, right? <laughs> if you're happy, if you know it, what? <laughs> if you're happy, if you know it. <laughs> no, this one, that's the one I set up, but this one is it. Bobby McFerrin, don't worry. Yeah. I hate that song in the wild. Just stuck in your head, man. Like, shut up, Bobby. I got it. You know, he said, don't be afraid, be happy, and be what? Full of joy. Because the Lord has done a wonderful thing. Somebody needs to tell me, what's the best thing God ever done for you? And are you happy? Are you happy? We're talking about the happiness of Christ is everything. Everything. And we're going to say some things that... uh, one side of view is true, but we want to look at the total side of the happiness of Christ, right? <laughs> Here's the thing, right? Don't worry, be happy. When, when Bobby McFerrin is like, "Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry, be happy." Have you ever loved someone so much that you were willing to serve them just as Jesus loved you? Were that happy? No, I'm serious. I will do anything I can to make sure you understand what Jesus can do for you. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you know what Jesus can do for you. What did Jesus do for us? He went all the way to the cross. And he was happy to do it. You know, he's happy to do it is because Jesus understood why he walked this earth. And I think sometimes we don't realize what our Savior was really doing, why he walked this earth, right? If so, if this is so, then what is the happiness of Christ? It also says in Psalms, right, he says, May all those who seek you be happy and rejoice in you. Pastor, I wake up every morning and I say, wow, it's a great day to serve the Lord. I'm happy. Amen. Sometimes I don't want to read my Bible, but one day I sit my feet like, wow, I'm still alive. Can I be happy today? Can I be happy every single day of the breath of my life? Be happy to serve the Lord, right? He also says in this, right, in the next uh, one, the Old Testament point of view, he said, Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy, rejoice, and rejoice out loud and sing your praises. We need to say, because Christianity is still under attack, shout it out. Or be so quiet and say, hey, can I help you? What do you need? What do you need? 
can I tell you about my Savior? What, what, seriously. We was talking Tuesday, man. And if some people would not walk by you, would not look you in the face. And you want to say, can I make you happy? Can I just say hello? Hi, how are you? Those kind words can change people's lives, right? We'll say this. The word happy, we said, can be translated as blessed. Especially when we talk about Matthew chapter 5 and the Beatitudes, right? Then we look at the happiness from the New Testament perspective. He says, uh, and I need my glasses now. He said, happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell you all kinds of evil against you because you are my followers. If you go out there and claim the glory of Christ, you got a target on you. You have a target on you. People don't like the fact that you're happy. Sometimes they think, man, why are you so happy, man? You know, we got to do all this work and everything. Don't worry. Be happy. We'll get it done. But you all, all grinning and everything and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, don't worry, man. Let's just do this thing, right? All evils against you. Be happy, verse 12, and glad, for great reward is kept for you in heaven. We said Tuesday, right? And I believe this. It was one of my mentors who passed away, Dr. Earlene Hutchinson. He said at her funeral, if you don't believe this scripture, maybe you need to go back and confess Christ. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. I'm going to say it again. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. What do you really be happy for? This country can change and say, don't worship Jesus. You can say, okay, I'm not. Kill me. My si- I was talking to my sister the other day. She said, I mean, when you told me this, right, uh, uh, if somebody wanted to rob you, right, you said, hey, get back in your car and drive me. I said, I ain't driving you nowhere, man. If you want to kill me, kill me right here. Anybody going to look for me for the rest of my life and like, where are you killing me? Dude, if you're going to kill me, do it right now. But you ain't taking me nowhere because God has already promised where I'm going. So if you're going to do it, do it. If he flinched past you, I'd have hit him in the throat and knocked him to the ground and took the gun away and called the police. Because I believe for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. It's gain. We need to shout and say this. May all those who seek you be happy and rejoice in you, Lord. Shout triumphantly the Lord all the earth be happy, rejoice, sing your praises. We're not talking about happiness, right? We said about the Beatitudes, right? And uh, this, right? New, New uh, Testament uh, position says this. Uh, Matthew 5, 11 and 12 says, Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you until all evils against you. Be happy, for great is your war, reward in heaven. Can I ask you a question? I asked a lot of people when I was talking about this sermon, right? What really make you happy? And a lot of them came back pretty much, you know, from a personal perspective. I, you know, I got a good job, have my family, have a house. That's what makes me happy. That is true. Can't deny that. Those things do make us happy, right? But thinking about this, right, when we there Tuesday, right, I hear in D3 and uh, Morgan say this. I said, can we play, can we pray for the youth and young adult of ministry of this church? Can we? I felt it in my heart when they said this. Can we be happy, which is blessed, 
and pray for the youth and young adults of this church. Amen. Say it again. Can we pray and be happy for the ministry of the youth and the young adults of this church? Yes, oh, God's going to do it. He's going to do that. But then we talk about the happiness of Christ. This is the other side. Yeah, I don't want to be homeless. I don't want to just be barely making it. I don't want to be picking through somebody's trash. I want the happiness of God, and that includes material things. I don't search for those things. What I search for is the love of Christ, which gives me joy so I can say, I'm happy. Amen. I'm happy yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. Have you ever asked yourself, what makes you happy while, you, while Jesus walked on this earth? What did Jesus say? What did he say? Uh, what foxes have no where to lay their heads? He said, oh, Lord, God, Father, I had no place to sleep. No. He never complained. You know why? He was happy doing the will of his father. Amen. He was happy doing the will of the one who created all of us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfection of our faith, who for the joy, let's recount the definition of joy, the happy state that results in serving God. Are we serving God? Are you happy to say, hey, hey, Pastor, what are we doing this weekend? Hey, we're going to do uh, uh, the Anaheim thing. We're going to go out there. Well, I'm kind of tired that morning. I got something else to do. Happiness is serving God. Amen. Happiness is serving God. Amen. Right. Hmm. And then he said this in, in Hebrews, and uh, Marcia said it earlier that in Hebrews 12, 2, he said, 12, 2, he said that, was, that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus dropped the mic. Not that he was done. He was like, <clears throat> there's no more I need to say. But there's much we need to do. I got y'all. I'm sitting back and make sure you guys are okay, Jesus said. But can you just do what I did when I walked on the face of this earth? That's what makes Jesus happy. Doing what his father said for him to do. If you're not happy, okay, Pastor, now you're going to boo me off the stage. If you're not happy, it's your fault. Say it again. If you're not happy, it's your fault. One more time. If you are not happy, it's your fault. Because Jesus told us how to be happy. He clothed people. He fed people. He visited people. He did what did. It made him happy. You looking for somebody to make you happy? Oh, hey, you know, hey, you know, I love you, Brian. You're my husband. You're my wife and blah, blah, blah. I'm not happy. You could take somebody around the world, cruise up and down. They can be richer than richer than rich. And look, I used to watch, I used to read cartoons or comic books, Richie Rich. He wasn't happy. If you ever read Richard, not happy. So if you do all these things, it cannot be material things that make you happy. Amen. Can't be. Because we serve a God who is worshiped in spirit and in truth. Amen. If you're not happy, talk to me later. <laughs> if you're not happy. Talk to me later. I said, Jesus dropped the mic, right? And we said this, Pastor. Remember this? In a small group, we said no more excuses. When um, Dr. Evans taught us about Solomon, he said four, th four things that Solomon saw. Right? He saw wealth. Got it. Didn't find happiness in there. He saw pleasure. We, 
We're not going to go through all his girlfriends and wives and stuff. He saw pleasure, right? Then he saw power and wisdom. He said it was all vanity, meaningless. Nothing was there until he found out what I'm seeking has to be the one who created me. Amen. So if you're not happy, seek God. Amen. Seek him. He will give you true happiness. If you're looking for somebody else to make you happy, you've lost. I ain't looking for nobody to make me happy, man. Jesus gave me eternity. Amen. I got to go from there, Pastor. Amen. Now, when I go from there, then I have to do the same thing Jesus do, D3. Make other people happy. I can't make you happy, but I can show you the way to happiness. Yep. I'm going to serve you. What? Serve? Yeah, I'm going to serve you. What do you need me to do for you? How can I help you? What do you need from me? Happiness in his relationship with this pastor, you said this about a month ago. Here's the crux of it all. We've been justified. Okay, I'm going to say it a little closer. (laughs) We've been justified. (laughs) See, Hurl's Hurl's ahead of me. He knows what's next, right? We've been justified. Second thing is, when you justify that means your slate has been wiped clean. That means you were guilty and someone took your place. But then what you say, Herb? You've been sanctified. That means I've been set apart. Not just been set apart. I've been set apart for the use of God. Amen. Hold on. Then he gave me a future hope, Pastor, that I may be glorified. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I got somewhere to go. In the meantime, I'm going to be happy because I'm blessed. Yes. Right. Yes. I have to do something. In chapter 2 of this book, it said that God, Jesus had some compassion. I mean, in his bowels, I have to say, can I help you see who God is? I have to do it because I've been justified. I've been sanctified, and I'm glorified. So can I tell you who Jesus is? I'm happy. I want to be happy. Not a smile on my face, but the smile in my heart. Hmm. Here's this thing is, right? We must, we must be answer the mantra of uh, we live in the pursuit of happiness. Everybody seen the, the uh, Will Smith movie? Yeah. Pursuit of happiness? Yeah. It was a misspelled word, but we'll get past that, right? But thinking about it is, right, what I got of it, he was protecting his son. And what got me, when he was in that shelter, he, his, his son touched his face. He said, you're a good papa. Will was in that role just trying to be happy to his son. Do you want to be happy? I was listening to Kurt Franklin, one of my friends, saying, do you want to be happy? You keep on doing wrong. Get out of your way and serve God if you want to be happy. You can't make anybody else happy until you put in the happiness of God. Yep. Well, I, was, I was home a couple of weeks ago, right? My youngest granddaughter is like three, right? She can be a pistol. I'm going to tell you right now. She's cute, but she can be a pistol, man. And so uh, I'm laying on the air mattress, right, in my sister's uh, family room, right? Here come my little granddaughter. Hey, she don't care what you're doing. I'm just going to invade your space, Papa. I'm just going to invade your face. Her tablet was turned up so high, I thought the police were like, can you turn that tablet down? And my sister was like, I heard this low, loud sound. I couldn't see anybody because we both down on the air mattress, right? And that little baby turned and laid her head on her papa. I, she could turn it up to 12,000 degrees of loudness. But once she put her head on me, she was happy. She's with her papa. 
and probably would hurt. If you want to be happy, don't depend on nobody else. Nobody can make you happy until you do the things that Christ wants you to do. Amen. If you want to be happy. Here's the thing about this, right? The only thing that can make you happy is your relationship with you and the one who created you. That's it. And to tell others about your happiness, about this temporal life and the personal life to come and have what people want to tell you. Here's what it said. There is translations in the Bible, right? This translation, when I said happy, can be translated as blessed. We talk about the beatitude. Check this out. Happy are those who are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will re receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. I got you. God will place these things upon you. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are those who have a pure heart. They will see God. Victory. If you want to be happy, do what Jesus did. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Brian. I know one thing that makes me really happy knowing that God is an awesome God. <laughs> and that's going to be our next song. You guys can all stand to your feet. We're going to thank the Lord and praise him. And man. All right, this one might be a little hard to follow. If you can't keep up with the verses, just respond. Our God is an awesome God. <clears throat> when he rolls up his sleeves, the angels putting on the red. Our God is an awesome God. There is thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his face. Our God, God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with when the sky was starless in the void of the night our god is an awesome god he spoke into the darkness and created the light our god is an awesome god the judgment and wrath he poured out on sodom the mercy and grace he gave us at the cross i hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our god is an awesome god our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Say it again. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Everybody. Our God is an awesome God. God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Sing it. Our God, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Last time. Our God, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our 
God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. The Lord is truly awesome been good to be together, God's people. I'm so thankful for each one of you online and in person. Been a good day to be together. Just a couple of things as we close out. Um, if you were someone that you responded to, to, to Brian's message and you said, I want the happiness that Brian spoke of, that happiness that comes from Jesus, that happiness that comes from practicing the Christian faith. If you've never experienced that kind of joy, happiness, being blessed, that you're meant for all the days of your life. That is possible. Yeah. As you put your faith and trust in Jesus. And it's very simple to do so. It's about giving your life to Jesus, which is simple, but not easy. Amen. It's simple. It's, 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 it's saying to Jesus that my life, I trust it into your hands. Yeah. And, and so, so I encourage you to, to, if you would like to do so between you and God, to put your faith in him by letting him know and saying, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. And if you do so, and you want to learn to live the life of following Jesus and experience that happiness, joy, blessedness in Christ, let us know because we want to journey alongside you. Send us an email to info at victoryanaheim.org. We want to help you take those first steps of following Jesus. And as we close out this service, I want to send you out with this blessing. Ryan gave you the blessing in this message. Yep. You are blessed. Yep. Do you see it? Yes. Do you feel it? Yes. Do you know it? Yes. You are blessed. Amen. Live the blessing every day. Live it. Let it show on your face. Let it show in your actions. Let it show in your words. Because the world needs the blessing that you have. Amen. The world needs the blessing you have. Amen. And, and uh, as you live out that blessing, there's a fulfillment that comes through serving and sharing and giving to others. So may you experience that blessing. And now I think they're going to close us out with my lighthouse. Just to finish that story I told you guys earlier. When I was uh, struggling with the car, my dad drove over, even though he had to be here for the worship service, he drove over to help me. That's the first thing. The second thing is, we're in a 15 minute zone and then you get towed. So I'm freaking out about that. My mom says, why don't you just go ask the security if they, you can leave the car here. I don't know if they're gonna let us, they let us. Third thing is this, my girlfriend graciously uh, went over to my car, she's calling AAA, they're gonna get taken care of while I'm here. Uh, she left the service to go do that, so, uh, <laughs> that's God. All those things are God. When, when we're struggling, when we're having a tough time, God's there and the people that follow him are also there. Let's do this together. In my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Lighthouse, you are my light. My lighthouse, my lighthouse. Shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Here we go. 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 Here we go.
go. Fire before us. Fire before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Sing it, church. Fire before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. Sing it again. Fire before us. You're the brightest.